Okay, uh, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, so, today we're going to continue on with our game, um, and we're going to focus on actually collecting our collectible. Um, now, to give you a bit of an idea of uh, where we're starting from, because uh, I know there's a couple of exercises uh, I've asked y'all to do, um, but uh, so the version of the game I'm going to be starting from is a version that basically just draws the player as this white box and then the collectible as this red box, um, and then you can move the player in all four directions, so up, down, left, and right, using the corresponding arrow keys on a keyboard. Um, so your program might be a little different depending on exactly which exercise you've done and things like that, um, but you should make sure that it, you can at least have a program that does this and lets the player move in all four directions. Um, okay, so what we're going to do today, um, so if you look at our game here, if we have our player, our white square, go and intersect or collide with the red square here, you can see that nothing happens. We can't actually collect our collectible. Um, so today we're going to focus on how to update our game to do that. Uh, now, um, rectangle uh, or square collision isn't that uh, difficult to write ourselves. Um, you basically need to check if the like corners of one square are within the boundaries of the defined by the corners of a different square um, and you can use that using your basic math with XY coordinates um, but Pygame has a has some functionality built into it to check for these uh, square or rectangle collisions itself um, and so at least for now we're going to use that rather than write our own um, so how do we do that well if we go to the Pi game website and go to the documentation here um, I'm not sure exactly where this functionality is off the top of my head uh, so I'm going to spend some time looking around here uh, so we're dealing with rectangles here uh, if you look at our code uh, we are drawing our rectangles with pygame.draw.rect, but then we're actually, before that, we're creating these rect objects, which represent where our player and collectible are on screen. And so presumably, if um, we can use these rectangle objects to uh, do our collisions. And so that's kind of where I'm going to start looking first. Um, so, okay, so if I start looking here at this list of functions, um, I can start seeing some interesting ones here, starting with contains. Um, so if I go click on that and go to contains, uh, this checks if one rectangle is inside another, and it's checking if it's like completely inside. Um, we don't necessarily want that. Um, because we want if like any part of our player touches the collectible, we want to collect our um, collectible. Uh, the next one, collide point here, we want to test, this is for testing if a single point is inside a rectangle. Um, what we have uh, is are two rectangles, one for the player and one for the collectible itself, so that we could make it work, but we probably don't necessarily need to uh, do that ourselves. Um, next, if we look at collide rect, which is testing if two rectangles overlap, um, it looks like it has some exceptions here, but this for the most part should be close enough to what we want to do. Um, so we'll start by updating our program to use that function. Um, all right. So, how are we going to do this? Um, 
Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and insert some code here uh, before we do our drawing, and uh, but after we handle all of this, these events for keyboard input. Um, and so what we want to do is collect the collectible if the player touches it. Um, and so how do we do that? Uh, well, for this collide rect call, um, we're going to need to have two rectangle objects, one which we call the collide rect method on, and one which um, we're passing as a parameter here. Um, so sort of arbitrarily, I'm going to just sort of check if the player rectangle um, intersects with our collectible rectangle. Um, that's going to return a boolean value, as you kind of can see right here, which is a true and false value. Um, and so I'm going to create a variable to hold that uh, boolean true and false value here. Um, so player touched collectible is what I'm going to call it. Save my program here. Um, and you know what, actually I'm going to save this as a different um, a different program just to help me keep things straight. So this is going to be collecting the collectible. So that's what we're doing. Um, so now if I run our program now, we're going to get an error here. Um, you'll see this error talking about player rectangle is not defined. Well, that's because I'm trying to use player rectangle up here, but in our program we haven't defined it until down here. So, uh, to fix that, I'm going to need to move our player rectangle definition a little bit earlier in our program. And then you'll notice also to create this rectangle, I need the player size and pixel constant that we've defined before. So I'm going to select that, copy it, and then move it up here. Um, now, we also need our collectible rectangle here. Um, and so I'm going to need to move that up. Oops as well. So if I select that using my arrow keys and do control X to cut it, then I can move it up here. Um, and then I'll need the collectible size for that as well. So I'll take that piece of the code and move it up here. Um, now to make this code a little more consistent, I'm going to just go ahead and make the player rectangles creation code have each of the parameters on a separate line. So it's similar to our collectibles rectangle code here. Um, so now if I run our program, that should at least run without errors. And yes, it doesn't seem to be erroring, erroring out anywhere. Um, but you do notice that uh, nothing is happening when I'm colliding with uh, this rectangle. Um, we're not even sure if the collision detection stuff is working yet. Um, so that's because we're not doing anything with what this collide rect method or function call gives us. Um, we're just storing it in a variable, and so we need to actually check that variable uh, to actually have our program respond to it. Um, so if the player touched the collectible, what we want to do is uh, collect it. Um, so actually collecting it is going to be a little bit more complicated, <coughs> but 
uh, I first want to make sure that this collision uh, code is working. So I'm going to add a print statement to print out uh, a message which will help me make sure that this what the code we've written so far is working correctly before I try and add more advanced things. So if I add a little message here, then hit Control S to save my program, and then F5, the shortcut key to run it. Um, let's move our player to touching the rectangle. And if you see over here in the shell window here, you see all these player touched collectible messages, um, which is coming from here. The print statement outputs to this shell window here. It doesn't draw text on our uh, game window here. And then if I move away, um, it's hard to tell, but you can, if you might be able to notice that it's not printing new messages anymore. And then if I move over, it is. So that's good. Um, it seems like the uh, collision detection stuff is working um, and so what we want to do now is um, do something kind of like actually collect the collectible. So how are we going to do that? Um, so when we collect the collectible in our game uh, we'll just let's say we want that to update our player's score. Uh, so I want to have a score variable and then let's say I want to add one point to it. Um, now to keep track of that, uh, our score variable, we haven't created that yet, so I need to uh, define that somewhere up here. I'm going to do that but just before the player's position um, because it's a little bit related to the player's position. Um, So what I want to do is define the player's initial score before they have any points. So we're going to create a variable called score and then initialize or assign it with a value of zero indicating that the player doesn't have any points now. Um, next, uh, I want to sort of print out the score to make sure this score logic is working correctly. Um, and so I want to print out a score message and then I also want to print out the value in my score variable. Um, and so I sh should be able to do that by having the string literal uh, right here in the quotes and then if I do the plus sign then I can sort of add the score to my string which should theoretically print it out. Um, I'm going to show you why it doesn't quite work right now. So if I go and hit the collectible now, um, oops, let me make sure you all can see this. Um, so if you see here, uh, we're getting an error message indicating that there's an error with our printing here, and it's saying the type, or the type error, it must be a stir. STR short for string, not an int short for integer. Um, so why are we getting this error? Well, um, that's because what we're doing here is we're trying to add a number, which is an integer, because of our score it's just a number, it's not text, to a string, which is some text. And by default, Python doesn't let you do that, um, because that's mixing types and there are Python's not quite sure exactly what you want to do with that, so it throws an error to make sure you correct your program to int more intentionally uh, say what you want to have happen. Now, how can we convert this uh, integer numeric score over to some string text? Well, Python provides a built-in str stir function for converting um, basically any type of object to a string. And so if we pass our score in as a parameter there, that should convert it to a string, which should let us um, print out our score now. Uh, 
All right, uh, so if you look over here at our shell window here, uh, you'll notice a bit of a problem with the way our um, collision detection uh, works right now. So basically any time um, our player is intersecting with the collectible, uh, we're incrementing our score, which means we can sort of just sit here forever and keep having our score go up and up and up. It's in like the 7,000s now. That's not what we want, um, and so what we need is some way to uh, basically make the collectible sort of disappear once the player's touched it and thus collected it. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, there are multiple ways we could go about doing this, um, and this is one of the things where in programming there are a lot of different ways we can go about solving problems. Um, now, in my mind, the ideal way is a little bit complicated for us to try and do now. Um, but the next best, um, some other options that come to mind are we could sort of just move our collectible outside of the screen. So to move our collectible's rectangle, its X and Y position, so far away that the player probably wouldn't ever uh, intersect it. Um, and so that could work, um, but it's not ideal in my opinion, and uh, it has some problems in that right now our player can move off screen and so they could theoretically eventually find it. Um, so what I'm going to do is create another variable which basically indicates if our collectible sort of still exists if it hasn't been collected uh, yet. So in order to do that, uh, what I basically want to have happen is only have this code here uh, basically run if the collectible um, hasn't been collected by the player yet. So what I need to have happen is something like check if a collectible still exists in the game. And then we're going to have an if statement here to check a condition. Um, uh, if the collectible exists, then we're going to want to do some code. Um, now before we get anywhere, um, I'm going to need to define this collectible exists variable. Um, and we're going to want the collectible to exist at the beginning of our game, so I'm going to initialize it, give it an initial value of true, um, and then I want to add a little bit of a comment here. Uh, to indicate that a collectible will always exist at the start of the game. Um, and I'm going to change this major comment here since so we're defining more information about the collectible than just the position. And so if I do that, um, we've created our collectible exists boolean variable here. Um, so now what I need to do is put all of this code inside of the if statement. Now in order to do that, I need to indent it over so that it's within the block of this inst uh, if statement. So I can do that by going to one of these lines here and then hitting the tab key on my keyboard to indent it over once. And I need to do that for basically all of the code I want to be inside the if statement. Otherwise, Python is going to think that this code is... Um, not uh, part of the if statement of things, just stuff afterwards. Um, so there is a little bit of a problem here. Uh, it's not going to be evident right now just because of the way the code is structured. Um, and that's 
if the collectible didn't exist, and I can actually demonstrate this right now um, by changing this to false and then running my program. So you'll notice here uh, Python is giving an error about the player rectangle not being defined. And the reason for that is if we read our code here, the player rectangle uh, variable and then the collectible rectangle and then the size constants are only defined if the collectible exists. Now if that's not the case, then we go down here and we try and use variables like the player rectangle. Uh, it hasn't been created yet and so we get errors, which is kind of a problem. So, uh, to correct this, uh, what we're going to need to do is increase the scope of where these rectangles and variables are defined so that um, they aren't uh, within this if statement. Uh, so where am I going to do that? Well, I could define all of that information way up here where we're defining sort of the initial information about the player and collectible. Um, but that would give us a problem in that we need like the player's position to be updated every time they move, every time their X and Y position changes, which is done here within our game loop in this while true loop. So I can't quite do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is introduce um, a new section of code here uh, for updating the positions of objects in the game world. And this is because we might have our player or collectible um, moving in the future, and so I'm just going to have this single section for that. Um, so if I do that, I'm going to move the player rectangle code up here. Um, that needs to be unindented. So I'm going to do that. Um, and if you're wondering kind of what I was doing there, uh, if I went go to a line and then I uh, say I'm here, um, I have tabbing set up in idle to insert four space characters, which means that if I want to get rid of those, I have to press like the delete key four times to get rid of that extra indentation. Um, now I also am going to need to find the player size here because I'm using it in this rectangle call. Um, and then I'll do sort of the same here for the collectible code that's creating the collectibles rectangle. And press Control V to paste that. Uh, I still need to unindent to this code. And I just hit backspace to get rid of that there. Um, don't need these blank lines anymore. But now, um, if I run my game, I shouldn't get any errors anymore. So that's good. I don't have any errors over here. Um, oh, that's not grammatically correct. Uh, let me add a comment here just in case. Um, frame. So these need to be updated each frame, which basically indicates each iteration of this loop here. Um, because some of our objects, right now, just the player, might move. Um, okay, so let's change collectible exists back to true. And... Then, if we go here and intersect with the collectible, you can see our store score still going up. Well, that's because we never changed the value of collectible exists, so it's always going to basically be true, which means all of this code here gets executed every time. Um, so, uh,
we need to add some new code where if the player touches this collectible it doesn't exist in our game world anymore. So we can do that by saying collectible exists equals false here. Um, now just to make this code a little bit easier for me to understand what's going on, um, I'm going to say count the collectible in the player's score to basically summarize what's going on in these lines here. Um, and then here, I'm going to say move the collectible from the game world. We're, that's what we're doing by basically saying collectible exists equals a false. Um, and this needs to be done to prevent the player from colliding with the same collectible multiple times and thus gaining more than one point from the same collectible. All right, so let's control S on our keyboard to save our game, F5 to run it. And then now, assuming I've written that code correctly, if I collide with the collectible, oh, you see my score is one and it's not going up anymore. Um, so, uh, and now you see uh, if I keep intersecting with the collectible, even if I move around, it uh, doesn't keep adding to my score over here. Um, but we do still have a bit of a problem in that we're drawing our collectible here even after I've collected it, uh, which could be confusing to players because they'd be intersecting it with it and then not having their score increase. So how do we correct this? Well, thankfully, it's pretty simple. Um, we just need to use this Boolean variable here when to control whether or not we draw the collectible. So I'm going to update my comment here to make it a little bit more accurate with what I want the code to be doing. If we check if the collectible exists, then we do this drawing code. And then remember, I need to indent it if I want it to be part of the if statement with the tab key I press on my keyboard. So that's important. Now, let's test our game again. Okay, so if I go and hit this collectible, what I would expect to see is it disappears here on the screen and then um, the score increments by one. So let's test that out. So my score is incremented by one. Um, the collectible is gone. You can see it no longer is visible on screen. So good. Um, that is basically it. Um, now there is one uh, other thing I want to kind of show you how to do now because right now our game's pretty boring. Um, we have one collectible and if the player collects it, that's it. Uh, they can't uh, do anything else. Pretty boring game. So what we really want to have happen is after the player collects this collectible, um, we have a new collectible appear somewhere else uh, on our screen. Um, so how can we do that? Well, uh, we need a way to basically after the player has collect did a collectible, we want to change its position, its X and Y position, to be something somewhere else on our screen. Um, now, we could uh, hard code something there. Um, um, actually, so let's do that. Um, so we could sort of say 
change our collectible X to be, I don't know, 200 and our collectible Y to be 200. Um, and then since we're creating a new collectible, we need to set that variable equal to true. Um, so if I do that and run the program, it'll work one time. So if I hit the collectible, you see I hit it there and it mo moved to a different position. But if I intersect with it again, we have our same problem before. Because uh, the new collectible is always being at this same position. Uh, so what we want to do is have the collectible appear kind of at new positions basically every time. Um, and an easy way to kind of do that in a lot of programming languages is to have the collectible's pos new position be randomly uh, changed each time. So how do we do that? Well, um, up here you may notice we've been importing and using these other Python modules, these kind of libraries of code that other people have written that we can incorporate into our programs to do things for us without us having to write it all from scratch. Well, uh, Python comes with a random module which lets you generate um, random numbers. So, uh, what uh, we're going to do here is use that random module. So you go to python.org and then go to docs for the documentation. Um, you'll end up getting uh, Python's official documentation. You can change version numbers here if you want. Um, but I want to look for the random module, so I'm going to do a quick search for random. And if I go in here, this will give me information about the random module, which is a module for generating pseudo-random numbers. Um, so, in order to use this module, um, we need to import it into our program. So if I go up here, I'm going to do import random, which will let us start using code in this module. And I'm inserting it here to kind of keep all of my imports in alphabetical order, which will make me easier to find if I've imported something later or not. Um, and so what do we want to do? Well, we want to generate new positions for the collectible here. Um, and we need to make sure they are within the width and height of our screen so that they don't appear um, sort of off screen. So we need to look for a way to sort of generate a random number uh, within some boundaries. So let's look through the documentation for that. Um, let's see here. So what is promising here is um, We have this rand range function and this random int function here. Both of them look like things we could use. Um, so let's keep scrolling down here to see if there's anything else we might want to do here. I don't see anything going on here. Um, so if we go back up to where we were looking at functions for integers, um, there are multiple ways we could do this. Uh, we could use the random range function or we could use randint. Um, at this point, I don't think it matters too much exactly what we do. Um, but I'm just going to say we're going to use the random range function for now uh, because we can call it uh, with a single uh, integer parameter for the stop or the maximum value it can uh, generate. Um, 
Now this is probably actually one greater than the value it can generate. It might be um, between like if we pass 100 and from here it might generate values from 0 to 99. Um, I'm guessing that based on what this says here, uh, but I could be mistaken. But it's not too important quite uh, yet. So uh, let's go back to our program and start adding this in. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, if I want to change the collectible x, then I want to randomly generate a new x position for a collectible. I can do random.rand range here. Um, and I need to pass sort of the maximum value. Well, if I want the collectible to still be on screen, then I don't want it to be any greater than the screen width and pixels. Um, that way it'll have a random position between 0 and the screen width. And then for the Y position, I kind of want something similar, but I don't want it to exceed the screen height and pixels. Um, and this is important, uh, that I'm using width and height appropriately here. Um, right now, they're just 400, 400, but if I were to change them to be different values, then I'd need to make sure that they are um, within the appropriate bounds. So, let's run our game again and see how this works. Go and get the collectible once. Oh, it's moved to this other position here. If I move down again, let's see if I can collide with it. Oh, we collided again. Let's do it again. And so you can see I can kind of keep going on with this um, basically as much as I want. Um, okay, so now our game's starting to get a little bit more fun. Um, you can see I can collect multiple collectibles and increase my score over here on the right side. Um, now I do want to mention one problem here with this game, and I don't know if I'll be able to completely reproduce it here quickly for you at least. Um, but with these um, random uh, collectible positions, um, because the maximum values I'm doing are f for the screen width and height, it is possible that we could have our collectible end up being positioned right here down in the corner, in which case it could be hard to see. Um, now the player can still collect it because we still let our player go off screen right now. Um, so the player could collect it and that should sort of solve the problem. But uh, if you want to um, have sort of some fun exercises, what you could do next is try and prevent that from happening. Um, to make sure basically the collectible always appears fully on screen as opposed to poss possibly like just off screen in the bottom left corner or bottom right corner. Um, to do that would require um, some math, so you can think about how you might do that. Um, other things you can uh, try and do for exercises. Um, so I do want to mention one thing before. Well, no, I'll just go on to the exercise. So right now we're changing the collectible's random position. Um, every time we create a new collectible, uh, we could sort of try and generate a random color for that collectible. So that could be something fun you could try to do. Um, and then we could also randomly generate a different size for the collectible. Um, so those are the two things um, that would be good well, three things now that would be good for you to try and do as exercises. Or prevent the collectible from ever spawning even a little bit off screen, um, and then randomly change like the collectible size or color every time you uh, end up creating a new collectible. Um, now, the one last thing I want to mention is that there's a little bit of... Uh, redundancy here in the code um, with this collectible exists variable. Um, 
because you can see here we're setting it to false, but then we immediately set it to true um, next time, or basically right down here in this code. Uh, so, um, there are various different ways we could go about sort of fixing this. Um, now, since we're creating new collectibles, uh, we don't actually need this code. Um, and so what I'm going to do for now, just to finish up this video, is delete this code since it's not really needed anymore. Um, so I can delete that. Um, and then remove whether or not the collectible exists here. Um, and then delete these two lines. And then sort of the main reason I'm deleting this code is because it's sort of good to remove code you don't need in our, your program. Um, just to sort of keep it simpler. Uh, and I don't think we'll need like the collectible exists variable um, again, or at least not for a while in our game. So it's better to sort of delete it now and keep our code as simple as possible. Um, so one last thing, uh, since I've deleted the code surrounding uh, what I have highlighted here, which was in an if statement, I need to unindent this code to uh, make it workable again. So one sort of quick way to do that is if I go to the beginning of the line and then hit the shift key on my keyboard and then tab. Oh, I guess that doesn't work here. Um, so, But if I go here and then go to the beginning of the line and hit backspace, then I can unindent that once. Or if I'm here and I have space, I can hit the delete key. Um, so I'll just do that. Sort of unindent all of this code. So that part of the code is corrected. Um, now I need to change this code here since the collectible exists variable isn't going to be around anymore. So I'll change this code back to what it was. So that's good. And then the last thing um, here, we don't need our collectible exists variable anymore. So we'll delete that. And uh, one way you can sort of quickly select the whole line to delete it if you're like at the end here. I'm going to hit shift on my keyboard and then the home key, which will highlight the line. And then I can just like press the delete key or the backspace key to get rid of that. Um, and I can do the same thing here uh, to delete this line. Um, so let's run our program to make sure I haven't broken anything here. Um, Yep. Yeah, so here's an example of what I was talking about earlier about the collectible being partially off screen. There are ways you could change your program to try and prevent that. Okay, good. So it looks like uh, things are working properly. Um, so that's all for uh, this video. Um, do those exercises and then we'll do, cover more things next time.